All right, so we're gonna take apart of the Fang G310. Um, one of the very cool features of this motor is it's exceptionally easy to service. A lot of geared motors have threaded side covers or they need special disassembly wrenches, uh, but the 310 comes apart with some very simple tools. Uh, we've got a number two Phillips, a three millimeter Allen, and a number 20 security Torx, and 10 and 17 millimeter wrenches. And that's all we need. Uh, so we'll start by just removing the axle hardware here. So we've removed the axle hardware and now we're just going to remove the jam nut. Uh, this is a 17 millimeter wrench needed to break the torque on this. And now you can see we've got our side cover bolts with our number 20 security torques. And now all we need to do is uh, press the motor open. So if you don't have a three jaw gear puller, you can very carefully use a hard floor to press the motor apart. Gear puller is superior, obviously, but not everyone has one. So we're just going to place the axle down on the concrete and apply some pressure and it comes right apart in two. So we'll head back to the bench and finish up. All right, so we're gonna take the case off the central assembly and here we have two separate parts that will come apart without any additional hardware removal. Here we've got the uh, inner bearing and we need to be careful not to lose this little bearing standoff here. On the core of the motor we have another little bearing disc that we don't want to lose. And now we'll take the uh, axle end off. For that we're going to need our number two Phillips and we'll remove these three bolts that hold the axle onto the planet carrier. So now to remove the axle from the planet carrier we just kind of rock it back and forth and it comes right off with lovely grease. And here we see the only non-intuitive part of this whole process. You'll see on these three planet gears, there's a little black dot, and you'll see how they all reach the sun gear at the exact same instance. When you're reassembling this motor, it's very important that these planet gears be reinstalled so that the dots align, as you see here. So as we remove the planet gears, we must be careful that we don't lose any of the components underneath. Now, to begin with, we have a very small o-ring which we'll remove and set aside and then we have a few parts that you might not have seen in gear reduced motors before this is a thrust bearing so these spiral cut gears produce an axial thrust as they bear the torque from the motor and it's very important that these thrust washers or sorry thrust bearings as well as whoops, the washers that they run on are all reinstalled in the correct sequence so from the surface of the planet carrier, we have a single washer on which the uh, thrust bearing runs, then the thrust bearing itself, and then a second washer. The O-ring, of course, sits just on the inner, inner race of the bearing, much like that. So we'll take the rest of these planet gears out and uh, continue with our disassembly. Okay, so we've got our planet gears removed, and now we will remove the rotor. So we've got our number three Allen. So here we've removed our planet gears. We've removed the bolts that hold these two housings together. Now, before we disassemble these, it's very wise to make a note of their index mark. And when we reassemble it, obviously that mark needs to line up. This is also a opportune time to show you another cool feature about this motor, and that's its hall sensor speed pickup. Um, one common drawback of gear reduced motors is that they don't work with hall sensor informed speedometers because the rotor's not always coupled to the, uh, the wheel of the bike. Uh, but with this standalone hall sensor speed pickup, you can use the cycle analyst to uh, display your speed even with the geared motor. So we're gonna use our trusty butter knife to begin prying these two parts of the uh, enclosure apart. We've removed our planetary gears and the thrust bearings and we can separate the cover plate and see the rotor and the stator of the G310. Interesting, this is a very different layout than every other e-bike motor I've ever seen in so much as it is an in-running motor. The part that turns, the part that has the permanent magnets is on the inner diameter of the stator. Normally that's reversed and the magnets are on the outside and the copper coils are inside. This layout has some benefits for cooling. The parts that get hot, the copper co coils, are closer to the outer case of the motor. So we want to show you the final step of disassembly, removing this in-running rotor. Uh, but to do that, we've got to head over to the vise and get some soft jaws, because we don't want to be grabbing onto this pinion gear with a steel vise grip or anything like that. So let's go. 
Uh, we want to avoid grabbing onto this pinion with anything made of steel. We don't want to risk chipping or denting the teeth, so that's why we've got our soft jaws in the vise. So, we are going to clamp it in. Now, you don't want to go crazy with the clamping torque. You want to be reasonably gentle with it. And then it's just a question of wrestling the stator off the rotor. And here we are. So, it might be a little tricky to see, but our hull sensors are tucked up inside the stator. You'll notice we've got three hull sensors, and the one on the back, again, is not used to drive the motor, but rather this is used to inform the speedometers. You can actually use your cycle analyst to monitor speed without a front wheel magnetic pickup. Actually, uh, this hull sensor here will give you all your speedometer data. So, we hope you've enjoyed this uh, disassembly of a Bafang G310 motor.